Welcome to one in a series of web-based tutorials for people working with the investment package developed by FAO. These tutorials will assist users of Rural Invest with problems that can arise in using the software. They are geared to people who have already attended a formal RIV course or who have taken the e-learning course, as they do not provide an overall guide to the use of the Rural Invest package. Rural Invest is designed to assist national technicians working with communities, groups or individuals who wish to improve their quality of life through local level investments, whether in activities which will directly generate income, such as irrigation, transport services or fish farming, or in support areas such as access roads, water supply or reforestation. Rural Invest helps field staff to ensure that all investment proposals presented by applicants respond to their real needs will be sustainable over time and will be clearly understood by the potential financing source, whether that be a development project, an NGO or a bank. This tutorial aims to assist Rural Invest practitioners in understanding key sections and indicators of the reports generated when data entry is completed. In particular, it would help users to identify and correct common errors which can be seen in the generated reports. The Rural Invest software provides a tool to prepare, analyze and monitor the output of income generating and non-income generating projects from simple project profiles to fully designed projects. Rural Invest can then generate reports covering various aspects of each project. The complete report option presents an aggregated report of all the independent or section-specific reports. This tutorial focuses only on the complete report for income-generating projects. It does not cover project profiles. In looking at operational income and cost details by block, it is important to properly assess both cash and in-kind inflows and outflows. Too often, on-farm consumption and in-kind family labour are not properly accounted for, leading to serious errors in the cash flow balance or the financial profitability of projects. For instance, for an illustrative cattle operation in Tanzania, East Africa, we can see that 11,016 litres of milk are produced per unit of production here defined as a herd of 68 cows, using a cycle of production of 12 months. However, 730 litres are consumed by the beneficiaries and therefore are not sold. This requires that the milk consumed on farm is accounted for as part of total income, but not as cash income. Similarly, we can see that 312 person days are required for herding and 114 person days for milking the 68 cows in a 12 month cycle. But this labour is provided in kind by beneficiaries and therefore not hired. As for the milk, this requires that the labour costs is entered into the software as part of total costs, not as cash costs. As a result, while the total cash net income of a 68 cow herd is 12,093,000 Tanzanian shillings, the total net income is only 7,901,000 Tanzanian shillings. Now let's look at the cash flow for the first year, use an example of a farmer who is a sugarcane outgrower. The without project situation, i.e. before any investment for this farm, is the cattle operation just discussed. For the sugarcane operation, we can see the blocks which have been defined, and in particular, the sugarcane new plantation block with its income and costs in the first year. We also note that for the first year, income is received monthly by looking at the months marked for receipt of payments in the chronology of production. Similarly, the operational costs for the first year are also distributed monthly, based again on the months marked for production activity in the chronology of production. 
The monthly net cash flow is simply the total cash income in any given month minus the total cash costs for that month. Below this line in the report, the accumulated net cash flow in a given month is estimated by adding the net cash flow for that month to the accumulated cash flow in the previous month. Keep in mind that the amount needed for a working capital loan is estimated by selecting the largest negative number on the accumulated cash flow row for year one. In this example, it is 455,472,000 Tanzanian shillings. The length of the working capital loan is estimated by selecting the last month with a negative accumulated cash flow plus an additional two months to provide a margin for error. In our example, the last negative accumulated cash flow occurs in the eighth month and thus the loan duration would be 10 months. Now, using the same illustrative sugarcane farm, we will look at the cash flow for the whole life of the project. Note that this cash flow is generated for both with and without project situations. In the financing sources section, we see the amount required for working capital or short-term loans, investment loans and own resources. That is the direct contributions of the beneficiaries and donation for investment. Next, we can see that the total cash income defined in each block is captured in the main income section under the row showing cash sales. Similarly, the total cash costs defined in each block are also captured, this time in the recurrent cost section where the operational costs are shown. The general costs and maintenance costs of investments are also recorded in the recurrent cost section. The general costs come from the general cost table, whereas the maintenance costs are calculated based on the maintenance cost per unit entered in investments cost table. Furthermore, the salvage value of the investments are recorded at the end of their economic life in the main income section. Remember that the salvage value of an investment item is the cash income received when selling the item at the end of its economic life. When an item is sold for salvage, it is generally necessary to replace it. So the replacement costs of these new investments are also recorded at the end of their economic life in the investment cost section. The financing payments section includes the capital and interest payments on the working capital loan, the primary investment loan, and the secondary loan. The value of the primary loan is always equal to the total financing needed less the amount of the secondary loan. In this example, we note there is a grace period of one year given to capital payments for both primary and secondary loans. Finally, we review the annual profit after financing to assess the amount of cash generated by the project. If there are negative figures extending over several years, this is a danger sign, as cash deficits are generally not sustainable for more than one or two years. To keep track of cash availability to replace investments when they reach the end of their economic life, a cumulative cash flow is also estimated. When there is a need to replace investments, we may have a negative annual profit after financing for that year. But we need to see if the cumulative cash flow is sufficient to cover this deficit. On the sugarcane farm, this issue arises in year 11. The annual profit after financing for this year is a negative 425,684,000 Tanzanian shillings. However, the cumulative cash flow is a positive 822,668,000 Tanzanian shillings. 
This indicates that the cumulative cash flow built up by year 10 was sufficient to absorb the negative profit after financing in year 11. Too often, rural invest users overlook negative figures in this cumulative cash flow. But if the cumulative cash flow in any year is negative, the participants will have to find the resources elsewhere to cover these losses, and this may not be easy. Typically, the user must review the project design with the participants and either make adjustments to the project structure or consider a secondary loan to resolve them. Last but not least, we look at the financial profitability. This section assesses the profitability of investments taking into account both the total income and the costs of the operation. That is, including both cash and non-cash, in-kind, costs and revenues. For this purpose, it is important to compare the with project situation and, where it occurs, the without project situation. What is important is the difference between these two results, or the incremental flow. To understand the financial profitability of the proposed investment, we focus therefore on the report for the incremental situation, since it measures the changes in expected returns of the two different situations. The information in the income section is simple, as it captures total income, or sales, from the different blocks, salvage value and residual value. Let's recall that the residual value is the remaining value of the investment items in the last year of analysis. That is, what the item would be worth if sold at the end of the analysis period. In the sugarcane farm example, the agricultural equipment and implements have a value at the end of their economic life, their salvage value. The residual value applies only to the cattle shed, the office and fencing since their economic life is 25 years, whereas the project duration was set to 20, leaving five years of useful life for these investments and therefore a residual value. The cost section includes the operational cost line that shows the sum of the costs registered in the block section, the general and maintenance cost lines, as well as lines for investment costs and their replacement costs. Financial payments do not enter into the profitability assessment. Instead, all investments and their replacement costs are recorded for the year in which they occur, regardless of any loan amortization associated to them. Net income is simply calculated by subtracting costs from income. However, Rural Invest calculates net income flows with and without donations or grants, so as to assess the internal rate of return and the net present value under two scenarios. One scenario considers all investment costs regardless of the source, so as to assess the return on all investments made. In our sugarcane farm investment, the internal rate of return is 17%, and the net present value is 264,502,000 Tanzanian shillings. The other scenario considers only the investment cost for which the beneficiaries or applicants are responsible. That is, any contribution that they must make plus the investment cost for which loans are used. Any costs covered by grants are excluded. In the same sugarcane example, the internal rate of return in these circumstances is 24%, and the net present value is 464,502,000 Tanzanian shillings. Finally, we can compare the financial return indicators for all investment costs of with the project situation without project situation, and incremental results. In analysing the sugarcane farm, we can see the internal rate of return 
does not seem to be very different between the with project situation at 17% and the without project situation at 16%. However, the net present value differs widely. For the proposed sugarcane operation, which is the with project situation, the net present value is 286 million Tanzanian shillings. For the cattle herding activity, which is the without project situation, the net present value is only 21 million Tanzanian shillings, less than one-tenth of the with project net present value. In consequence, the net present value of incremental returns is 265 million Tanzanian shillings, and the internal rate of return is practically equal to the with project situation. These results show that although the cattle operation offers a rate of return almost equal to the proposed sugarcane operation, because of the much lower capital being used for the cattle operations, the amount of net income from the sugarcane operation is much higher. To verify, remember that the net present value from incremental results is the difference between the net present value obtained from the with project situation minus the net present value obtained from the without project situation. Where there is no prior activity, and hence no without project situation, the incremental results will be the same as the with project results. Good luck.